Hey, my friends. Thanks for joining me here today. As the title says, I want to talk about uh, practicing compassion. Um, it is definitely a work in progress for me. Um, it's probably a big focus of my spiritual practice. Um, you know, always just trying to be a little bit more compassionate, think about it a little bit more, and just be aware of things. I wouldn't necessarily say that I've ever been an uncompassionate person or been harsh towards people. Uh, I think the biggest thing, uh, part of my work is, is I've always kind of had a special, you know, I've had something for the underdog. I always feel for somebody that is a little bit downtrodden, but that's not the whole story there. I mean, and the hard part is, is having compassion um, for people we don't know or in situations that, that aren't personal to us. And the absolute hardest is having compassion for people that are very hard to have compassion for. And it's a work in progress, and some of it I'm not going to get in this lifetime. I'll need two or three more lifetimes because there are certain people that I do have a hard line on, but I'm just trying to make those less and less. People that hurt children, I don't have any forgiveness or compassion for. I could be wrong, but, uh, you know. But anyhow, I was reading a little bit this morning, as I like to do sometimes, and I had a good art, uh, blog post that I read somewhere, and I just thought I'd share it with you. And I'm not going to read the whole thing in its entirety, so I'll put a link to it below. Okay, sorry about that. It took even longer than I figured it would to open up. But anyhow, the, the title of the article is A Guide to Cultivating Compassion in Your Life with Seven Practices. And it's by a gentleman named Leo Babauta, B-A-B-A-U-T-A. -A -A. Like I say, there'll be a link down below. And there's a quote to start it off. If you want others to be happy, practice compassion. If you want to, if you want to be happy, practice compassion. I believe compassion to be one of the few things we can practice that will bring immediate and long-term happiness to our lives. I'm not talking about the short-term gratification of pleasures like sex, drugs, or gambling. No, I'm not knocking them, <laughs> but something that will bring true and lasting happiness, the kind that sticks. The key to developing compassion in your life is to make it a daily practice. Meditate upon it in the morning. You can do it while checking email. Think about it when you interact with others and reflect on it at night. In this way, it becomes a part of your life. Or as the Dalai Lama said, this is my simple religion. There is no need for temples, no need for complicated philosophy. Our brain, our heart is our temple. The philosophy is kindness. And let's use the Wikipedia definition of compassion. Compassion is an emotion that is a sense of shared suffering, most often combined with a desire to alleviate or reduce the suffering of another, to show special kindness to those who suffer. Compassion essentially arises through empathy and is often characterized through actions, whereas wherein a person acting with compassion will seek to aid those they feel compassionate for. Compassionate acts are generally considered those which take into account the suffering of others and attempt to alleviate that suffering as if it were one's own. In this sense, the various forms of the golden rule are clearly based on the concept of compassion. Compassion differs from other forms of helpful or humane behavior in that its focus is primarily on the alleviation of suffering. Uh, benefits. Why develop compassion in your life? Well, there are scientific studies that suggest there are physical benefits to practicing compassion. People who, can pra who practice it produce 100% more DHEA, which is a hormone that counteracts the aging process, and 23% less cortisol, the stress hormone. But there are other benefits as well, and these are emotional and spiritual. The main benefit is that it helps you to be more happy and brings others around you to be more happy. If we agree that it is a common aim of each of us to strive to be happy, then compassion is one of the main tools for achieving that happiness. It is therefore of utmost importance that we cultivate compassion in our lives and practice compassion every day. And how do we do that? And he shares seven compassion practices, and this is where I'll kind of uh, just summarize and let you read them in full. Morning ritual. Greet each morning with a ritual. Try this one suggested by the Dalai Lama. Today I am fortunate to have woken up. I am alive. I have a precious human life. I am not going to waste it. I'm going to use all my energies to develop myself, to expand my heart out to others, to achieve enlightenment for the benefit of all beings. 
I'm going to have kind thoughts towards others. I'm not going to get angry or think badly about others. That's one I have to work on right there, especially when I get into traffic or when I get out in crowds of people. I'm going to benefit others as much as I can. Then when you've done this, try one of the practices below. Empathy practice. The first step in cultivating compassion is to develop empathy for your fellow human beings. Many of us believe that we have empathy, and on some level nearly all of us do, but many times we are centered on ourselves, and he says, I'm no exception, and we let our sense of empathy get rusty. Try this practice. Imagine that a loved one is suffering. Something terrible has happened to him or her. Now try to imagine the pain they are going through, imagining the suffering in as much detail as possible. After doing this practice for a couple of weeks, you should try moving on to imagining the suffering of others you know, not just those who are close to you. And then number three is commonalities practice. Instead of recognizing the differences between yourself and others, try to recognize what you have in common. At the root of it all, we're all human beings. We need food and shelter and love. We crave attention and recognition and affection and above all, happiness. Reflect on these commonalities you have with every other human being and ignore the differences. Relief of suffering practice. Once you can empathize with another person and understand his humanity and suffering, the next step is to want that person to be free from suffering. This is the heart of compassion, actually the definition of it. Try this exercise. Imagine the suffering of human being you've met recently. Now imagine that you are the one going through that suffering. Reflect on how much you would like that suffering to end. Reflect on how happy you would be if another human being desired your suffering to come to an end and acted upon it. Now open your heart to that human being. If you feel even a little that you'd want their suffering to end, reflect on that feeling. That's the feeling you want to develop. With constant practice, that feeling can be grown and nurtured. Act of kindness practice, number five. Now that you've gotten good at the fourth practice, take the exercise a step further. Imagine again the suffering of someone you know or met recently. Imagine again that you were that person and you're going through that suffering. Now imagine that another human being would like your suffering to end, perhaps your mother or another loved one. What would you like for that person to do to end your suffering? Now reverse roles. You are the person who desires for the other person's suffering to end. Imagine that you do something to help ease the suffering or end it completely. Once you get good at, I'm sorry, once you get good at this stage, practice doing something small each day to help end the suffering of others, even in a tiny way, even a smile or a kind word or doing an errand or chore or just talking about a problem with another person. Practice, practice doing something kind to help ease the suffering of others daily. And six, this, one's a tough, this one is a tougher one, a lot tougher. Uh, those who mistreat us practice. The final stage in these compassion practices is not only to want to ease the suffering of those we love and meet, but even those who mistreat us. When we encounter someone who mistreats us, instead of acting in anger, withdraw. Later, when you are calm and more detached, reflect on that person who mistreated you. Try to imagine the background of that person. Try to imagine what that person was taught as a child. Try to imagine the day or week that person was going through and what kind of bad things had happened to that person. Try to imagine the mood and state of mind that person was in, the suffering that person must have been going through. And then reflect if you mistreated someone and they acted with kindness and compassion towards you, whether that would make you less likely to mistreat that person the next time and more likely to be kind to that person. See, reversing that script, that's tough. That is really tough right there. And number seven, an evening routine. I highly recommend that you take a few minutes before you go to bed to reflect upon your day. Think about the people you met and talked to and how you treated each other. Think about your goal that you stated this morning to act with compassion towards others. How well did you do? What could you do better? What did you learn from your experiences today? And if you have time, try one of the above practices and exercises. These practices can be done anywhere, anytime. At work, at home, on the road, while traveling, while at a store, while at the home of a friend or family member. By sandwiching your day 
With a morning and evening ritual, you can frame your day properly in an attitude of trying to practice compassion and develop it within yourself. And with practice, you can be begin to do it throughout the day and throughout your lifetime. This above all will bring happiness with this above all with will bring happiness to your life and those around you. And one last quote by the Dalai Lama, my message is the practice of compassion, love, and kindness. These things are very useful in our daily life and also for the whole of human society, these practices can be very important. And I would say to finish off there, it's, it's not even just uh, being nice and being compassionate to others. I think when we foster this kind of feeling, this kind of thinking, this kind of attitude, that we're happier within ourselves. So it's kind of a win-win situation, but. Anyhow, I just wanted to share that with you today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Have a beautiful uh, rest of the day, and I'll see you here uh, real soon. Peace.